Hello and welcome to another episode of Steelfur Speaks. I am Steelfur, London-based flesh and blood and other card game player, here to bring you a, no, just a pretty chilled episode, to be honest. We're going to talk about everything that's important um, in the world of flesh and blood, and that, at the moment, is playing World of Warcraft. Um, this is my rogue. Um, no, I'm just going to show this off. This is what I've been doing recently. Um, it's a bit of fun. I uh, got some decent gear, going raiding. Um... This is WoW Classic, of course. Anyway, no, no, no. So not not talking about WoW um, as much as I would love to. It's what I've been doing recently. Um, I Because I'm kind of on like a little bit of a competitive break until next year, just because um, I'm not going to Worlds. I made the decision it was too expensive. I wasn't qualified because all the means I tried to get qualified didn't really happen. And I couldn't really afford to justify to go. And I've got a conference literally... Uh, the Tuesday after I would get back from World, so I would have to rock up into France very jet-lagged and have to be very um, enthusiastic for a conference, which I didn't really like the sound of. So I'm not going to be able to make it to Worlds, which is such a shame. I know a few people have messaged me and wanted to meet me there, wanted to know what I was playing, or this other kind of stuff. Um, so unfortunately, not going to be at World Championships, but it looks like it's going to be an absolute blast. I do wish I was there. Um, but you know, what can you do? Uh, they're kind of gearing it up to have this like dragon festival vibe, um, you know, with fireworks and stuff like that. There's obviously tales of adventure, which is not legendary, which is a choice. We can talk about that choice, but I don't really need to, um, you know, you're giving out a one of promo that, you know, for a special one of hero, but it's not legendary. So now people who are really into Yorick have to buy three of them. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a question mark. Um, I don't know why that doesn't have legendary on. They're happy enough to print legendary on cards. Uh, other stuff, you know. These Fiendal sleeves are gorgeous. I need to buy some. So if you're going, you want to sell these, I will have British people at the event. Um, I will buy them from you. I need at least three, um, I would say, just to make sure I've got some for the future. Um, I will also buy a copy of Tales of Adventure. For Sink Below Playmat, not so fussed about. Uh, though I will be looking to buy one of these Waps of Wraith playmats because they're gorgeous. So, you know, that's just a shopping list. We'll just get in there. Um, artists are going. You know, you can see this Dragon Festival vibe. One of the cool things that, like, LSS did is they've sent um, unannounced spoilers to certain content creators. Not myself, unfortunately, though I will have a spoiler on the 2nd of November. So you can stay tuned for that. I'm very delighted to have it. Um, but they have spent unannounced spoilers to various people, um, which are these Marvel equipment. Um, I think the tall Timmy got the first one, which was an axe for Warrior. The act itself is a bit dire, but I assume it's going to get some support in um, Dynasty. We'll see what kind of support it gets. Um, and, you know, it's still pretty cool. They're doing this unique card frame, which is pretty gorgeous. Um, cold foils, which I'm assuming is going to look really good. Um, and we'll just have to see what the power level of Dynasty is. Obviously, I'm pretty excited for it, but, you know, we'll kind of see what the power level is and whether it's closer to, we'll say, Everfest Reinar or whether it's closer to Everfest Runeblade, for example. Um, but I do like it. So they sent Tor Timmy a full letter telling him there would be a, a presentation ceremony on at the Dragon Festival, which I assume is the World Championships. So they're going to have this whole theme for the World Championships of like a massive Volcor festival, uh, which would be really cool. And I wonder what he, they're going to give to him then at the event as part of the presentation ceremony. Maybe there's going to be a nice gift there for some content creators or people who've supported the community. I mean, it makes me even more sad. I'm not going to be there because obviously, you know, I support the community. <laughs> I'm a content creator. I support the community. Include me. Pick me, coach. Um, but no, um, you know, it's just pretty cool. It's really cool, the whole theme. It's really cool that Worlds is happening. Um, you know, if you said to me two years ago there would be a World Championships with this much money on the line for a brand new card game, I would have laughed. Partly due to COVID and partly because, like, what card game is offering this much money for anything anymore, right? You know? Uh, this is the next tournament I'm playing in, the Battle Hardened in Leeds. Um, I'm not really so keen on the Battle Hardened formats. Like, like, why are you going somewhere for a weekend and playing a one, two one-day events? Feels a bit weird. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I just think the, the prizing is too heavy loaded. They want people and casual people to play. You can't just have prizes for the top eight. Uh, you need to go down the ladder a bit more. Um, I've kind of said that before. 
And that brings me kind of to one other thing that bothered me recently. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, retailer news. It should be in here somewhere. Yeah, so this Dynasty Armory weekend, if anyone's seen my Twitter, they'll have seen a tweet about this. Um, like, there's this big page dedicated to Armory events, right? And the Dynasty Armory weekend, it sounds like a special thing, right? But when you dig into it, it's not actually a special thing. So Dynasty released in stores November the 11th. We'll make special Dynasty Armory Weekend to get players into your stores. This is marketing, right? A special Armory Weekend. Players are keen to see new cards, and the first events will feature Dynasty. will bring further interest and anticipation and also Dynasty, right? Players can prepare new decks, whether it's cracking packs or picking up singles. So this is all good. It's really good. Um, it's really good until you realize that, like, who can participate? gem stores that's fine is this an extra armory event for november no this event should be run instead of your normal weekly armory event stores cannot run this as an additional armory event it specifies a format and then it says what are the prizes must use the november armory kit as normal stores should offer the general use dynasty playmat as the door prize stores are encouraged to use dynasty boosters as additional prizing right and if you do one you will be in with a chance to get a spotlight, which, you know, I mean, spotlights, are, they're really fun, but they're not particularly, like, you know, most players have heard of your store if they're local to you. Um, you can run it whatever you like. Run it Friday afternoon? No. Better to run it in the Saturday afternoon, I would say. Um, and there will be a, t a Twitter competition, right? Uh, which stores can win. Um, you have to post, take a photo and post it. Uh, players can enter as well, and you can win a Dynasty box, a Playmat, and Blessing of Ether promos, right? So, all in all, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, it's it's a special Armory weekend. LSS are putting marketing budget behind it, which is big for a lot of stores, right, to get the marketing out there that this is happening. Uh, the main problem I have with it is just this, right, is the pricing and the fact that it's not an additional Armory, right? So, what the Armory event is, is fantastic, right? The pricing is provided by LSS for free. Amazing for stores because they don't have to put anything up, but they can put extra packs up or something. And it, it basically gets flesh and blood into your weekly life in a meaningful way. Right? But a lot of people don't have like flexibility on the weekends, right, to play. They have a set day in the week they've carved out time for to play flesh and blood. And this is creating a choice for stores, which I don't I don't like. This is just a friction. Right, where they have to choose between taking an armory away from their their person's like weekly flesh and blood outlet, which is important for a lot of people because they go see their friends, they relax, they you know they have a fun evening. To force people to come in on the weekend, right? Maybe the same people aren't going to be able to make the weekend. And um, there's just really, I just really don't see a reason why you're not allowed to run this as a second armory. And well, I I do kind of see the reason. So the reason is that um. There's only a certain number of weeks ends in the month, and you have the armory kit. And if you give the if you give the armory prizes out on a Tuesday, then you don't have a prize to give out on the weekend for the armory weekend event, right? So provide another prize, right? But if you're too busy with worlds, and that's fine, you're too busy with worlds, you're too busy with organizing other stuff to provide another prize, just give people the flexibility to do what they want. Like just say, look, we're going to make a big push for stores to run a Dynasty Armory weekend. It doesn't have to wait, take away from your regular Armory. You can run a second one this week as a special dispensation. It needs to be Blitz constructed so people can get the cards, but don't have to worry about getting all the cards. Um, we'd recommend diverting some of your Armory promos to do it. Um, and there's also this giveaway, right? I don't understand why this isn't the announcement, which is just, here's an optional extra do what you like that makes sense for your local community. I don't understand why they're pushing people because we've talked about this before, right? And this is another example of kind of, I've said it before, of just restrictive organized play in a way that doesn't let stores customize things to just be more comfortable for their local players, right? In a way that says, no, you're doing it my way because I've decided that's best from New Zealand, but locally every single country is different. Right. And we've run into friction with this a few times with skirmishes, with pre-releases, you know, stores not being able to run a pre-release on the day that they want to or with the amount of players that they want. Um, you know, stores having to run a certain number of rounds for armory, for, for skirmishes and things. 
um, and for tournaments when they shouldn't have to, even to the extent that some like skirmishes, um, nationals, PTQs, PQs and things were going on for like a round or two rounds longer than the number of players justified because LSS set the number of rounds in stone, right? So, you know, all of these things just come back again to this idea of we're being restrictive and it's not actually benefiting stores to be that restrictive, right? This might, there's a big criticism of this. And also, this isn't special. This isn't this isn't shiny. This is just saying to stores, don't run an armory on Tuesday. You can run one on Sunday instead, right? They could already do that. And a lot of stores I know were already doing that. You're not giving them any extra incentive except maybe a, pro, a poster or something. But a lot of stores don't... Let's be honest, a lot of stores don't necessarily push their game agenda in a way that would market this better right it's word of mouth it's people who already play inviting their friends it's a lot of of that kind of thing and those people will hear about this anyway so the extra marketing isn't really that impactful what is impactful is that you're not providing a special prize for this like you're not providing an extra armory slot to use for the month or something and you're basically just creating friction within a community because some people are going to want to do it on Tuesday like normal and some people are going to want to do it especially on Saturday and now the store has to choose between which group of people to support right do I do it to my regulars on Tuesday do I do it to the people who want to come in and travel right there's no reason it couldn't have just been a secondary armory the other thing that bothers me about this is that we've had two supplemental sets this year neither of which have had any sort of pre-release focused event and I'll say this is the gauntlet kind of thrown down to LSS is they need to if they're going to release more supplemental sets in a year or even one supplemental set a year they need to crack some sort of pre-release format for it right i personally don't care what it is give me six packs i will build a chaos shapeshifter deck with those packs and say you can use chaos shapeshifter with any heroes in the game but you have to play cards from this set um and make it even 10 packs if it has to be um or six or seven or however many it has to be um to build a 30 card deck and just say cool it's going to be shapeshifter sealed pre-releases for supplemental sets i genuinely i genuinely don't care if that's the way it has to be that's fine or if it's something like and this could potentially work it's blitz constructed plus boosters so um you know like like imagine this right blitz constructed plus boosters with you know, 10 minutes of like-for-like like trade time, right, before the before the games, like, for deck building, right? So I, I'm just throwing out random ideas, but you can see my point, right? So you bring a Blitz deck for your favorite class, like, say, Benji or Azalea or something like that, right? You get given four boosters, right? We'll say that's the entry to the tournament is four boosters, right? You open your boosters, and then you have 10 minutes to go around the room and swap like for like cards that you have so common for common rare for rare etc for cards that match your class after that 10 minutes is up and, and the store can help people who aren't very good at trading find people you know the point is it's supposed to be casual so anyone who's trying hard like good for them but the prize whatever prize you put up should be um random and not for the winner right you know like it should be, if you're going to do something that chaotic you need to make sure that the prize isn't for the winner so it doesn't encourage degeneracy between friends and instead just encourages crazy so go around you can trade like for like with other people um you know and expect people to be decent about it because it's unpleased and it's a pre-release and then after that you have 20 minutes to build your deck with those new cards that you traded for um and and go and go and and you've got your deck that you brought with you your existing 30 or uh, 40 cards you have all of these new cards you've got and basically you had to make a guess or you saw the previews and you were like, this new hero is going to be lit with those cards. And you have 20 minutes to find space for those cards in your deck. Go, have fun, right? And that kind of, like, my point is that anything, right? Anything creative like that for a supplemental set. We need to have, we need to have a pre-release for a supplemental set. That's really what this comes down to. Because remember, when I'm critical of Flesh and Blood, it's because I want Flesh and Blood to do better. Um, I'm not here complaining about Flesh and Blood for 20 minutes. It's one of the reasons that the people from the Flesh and Blood team still talk to me. It's one of the reasons that I have positive interactions with them. I still get previews. It's because I'm critical, but I'm constructive, right? And I'm not just coming on here and saying, I'm disappointed in this. It's terrible. It's shit. Game's dying, right? And even if you read my, my, um, my Twitter thread earlier, you know, someone said, oh, this is doom and gloom. They can't keep doing this. You know, everything is really terrible. 
yeah, so if we just jump over to my Twitter, uh, firstly, you'll see details about a Genesis competition I'm running for these amazing um, Steel Fur promos. Um, I backed the Kickstarter, so I got, like, unique promos with my content creator logo on. Um, I'll keep saying it, you know, Flesh and Blood, please give me a bear promo the second there's one in the game. Like, if there's a Druid class and he can turn into a bear and I don't get that, um, things are going on fire, right? You know, we're, we're burning stuff down. Um, but, you know, the second there's a bear in the game, you know, just send that my way. I don't mind. Until then, I'm going to keep photoshopping bears into whatever preview you send me. Uh, the pandas went down really well, so we're going to keep doing that. Um, yeah, so I'm running a Genesis deck building competition with this game. If you don't know what Genesis is, Genesis Battle of Champions, have a look. It's really fun. Uh, Grid-based TCG, so you summon um, creatures onto the board, but there's actual, like, a four, um, I think it's a three by three board that they move around on and you have to like control space as well as um like life totals and stuff really fun uh, but if we look at this thread right so um i'm generally saying what i've already been saying like there's no spice here it's just existing um people have to crack the packs um straight away to get involved they can't like you know they can't get involved without buying packs uh they don't not everyone is invested to like buy a ton of the new packs just to build a deck straight away um you know there's no like ira themed volcor deck uh but there was one reply i wanted to say um that's really sad if it's the start of support of less events right my lgs really poor with extra support they basically never gave anything extra to anyone supposedly lgs is they don't have to give extra if they have an armory kit. If you don't have an armory kit, they really should offer some boosters or something. Um, but, he, you know, he was like, it's really sad this is the start of a support of something negative. And I was like, well, let's not pretend that it's the start of something negative. LSS is very busy with worlds and probably hasn't figured out the supplemental set yet. Now, I kind of just want to, like, hi I wanted to highlight that because I think it's important to acknowledge that I'm critical, but I'm positive when it comes to engaging with the game right um i just feel like this could be better i feel like it lacks a bit of sparkle or spice to make it more of an interesting weekend and, and there are reasons i mean world is going on um literally the week before lss are going to be sleeping in new zealand and probably not getting up for like a week once they're back like all of these things are true but with all of that being said i always like my things to be better and i think they do need to and i'm it's kind of a challenge to the community as well um to put together a pre-release format for supplemental sets that makes them enjoyable and above all accessible right now whether that's you know you have to enter with a blitz deck from one of the blitz sets plus like six packs and it's more sealed or whether you have to enter with um a blitz deck you bring or a commoner deck that you bring that then you're allowed to customize with cards you open or trade for or whether it's chaos shapeshifter or anything like that um do you have we have to identify a format like you know it could be as simple as it's a chaos shapeshifter where you get three packs of the latest set that was released plus three packs of that um set or you get to pick the three packs you choose what set they come from and you get three packs of the um the new set because ultimately people don't need to have a powerful deck they don't even need to have synergy they just need to be playing the new cards and have a bit of fun with them and even if you can only like if everything's chaos shapeshifter and there's only like you know half of your deck has synergy and half of it's a mess like whatever you'll still have fun so that's the main thing right um other than that i don't know testing for worlds is going on it's a pretty big format um the ban list changes are worth talking about and are quite interesting um if we can just bring those up nice and quick don't need to show you my passwords um that's weird it's not here it should be here so we had erratas those erratas are fairly easy to understand um rune chants now trigger on weapon activation you don't get to choose not to trigger them uh by attacking a spectra um so you know if you attack a spectra the rune chance will trigger anyway you don't have that option uh zephyr needle and phantasmal footsteps can no longer um you can no longer break yeah so you can no longer basically save either of these cards by playing 
something that buffs or reduces the weapon, right? So it's a bit of a weird change because now you can't like raise a reflex your Zephyr Needle to keep it in play. Um, but, you know, or Blinding Light to save your Phantasmal Footsteps, but, you know, it cleans things up. Uh, Blossoming Spellblade. Turns out Blossoming Spellblade didn't say end of turn, so you could play literally anything you wanted as long as it had been banished. Now, people weren't getting Blossoming Spellblade to work, but if they had been, that could have been a dangerous thing. Um, they've also errated the idea that putting something on the bottom of the deck will now always say put it on the bottom of the owner's deck. That just means you can't have cards from your opponent's deck in your deck. Stop trying to do that. It's not fun. Um, and then there are some non-functional erratas that basically just make things work the way they should work. Um, so just ignore those. The cards work exactly the way they, you thought they do. Uh, and then we have the band announcement, uh, which is kind of like our meta announcement. So Pulse of Eisenloft is gone. Um, it's quite a powerful change to old him. Um, remember that Pulse of Eisenloft sets you up with a three-card fuse, which is obviously very, very important because you get that three-card fuse late game. You're blocking with one card, and then you're using the fuse to come back in with nine damage, dominate, disruption, etc., etc. Um, and you basically pitch Pulse quite a lot during the game and then also set up the fuse, and it's kind of crazy. Um... So, like, Pulse is, like, one of the most defensive cards in Ultim's deck, while also being one of the most offensive cards in his deck when combined with Oak and Old. Um, so the card is just really, really impactful. And the other thing, of course, to remember is that with Crown of Seeds um, and things like that, you actually do draw through your deck quite fast compared to other heroes, so you do see it a lot more, especially as the game goes on. You might end up seeing it quite often. So I think getting rid of that is definitely the right choice to depower Ultim. I think there is a broader question in my mind as to whether Ultim needed depowering um he won a lot of the nationals but i can tell you that like having played against certain versions of phi um and certain versions of other decks like the tech was out there to be old him i just don't think a lot of people landed on it in a concrete way um the way that i see other people like the reason that phi won in the uk is that they found out how to be old him and be old him consistently and other people weren't doing the same and because of that they they didn't get the same thing through so i think they could have potentially left it the way it was and phi maybe could have grown to deal with all these old hymns but equally i don't hate making this kind of small change because it's not it's not taking old hymns teeth away it's not getting rid of something like crown of seeds it's taking away this one point of efficiency that's very important but not defining to the deck but it does mean inevitable oak and old fuses aren't as inevitable it creates a bit more breathing room for other players it is interesting that despite this change we see no changes to briar despite the fact that in the same time frame as this has happened briar won the pro tour and old him still doesn't necessarily beat briar as well as it did like as well as you might think it does and this change will make old him probably worse into briar because the pulse was actually really important for handling damage from the rosetta and also taking away the arsenal capability of the briar and slowing down their turn so the fact is this actually makes old him drastically worse against briar and because of that you know is Briar just going to win worlds, right? That's a big question. Is Briar just going to win worlds? Explosive capabilities, one over half as many, just under half as many uh, national championships as old him, but hasn't been hit in any way. So that's kind of interesting to me. Um, I was predicting a ban to belittle Minoism, um, which are defining cards in both Briar and Fi, depending on your build. Um, I was predicting some sort of ban for briar um i don't know exactly what it would have been it could have been something like um pulse of candle hold which briars use quite effectively uh but i don't think that's so impactful it could have been something like um just trying to think about small changes that wouldn't have killed the deck um bramble spark you could ban bramble spark that's quite powerful but not like it would just basically dilute the power of their non-attack actions and force them to run something else uh but you know you, my point is i'm surprised that there are no changes to briar here right i don't think that going just on the national championships was necessarily the good way to do this i think we could have gone based on other stuff as well um and i think 
based on the way the PT played out, I think Briar also probably deserved some active changes. Um, so my current prediction for winning the um, World Championships is Briar. Um, I still think personally that Fi is one of the better decks um, that is just criminally underplayed and misunderstood. I think Dromai is still underplayed and misunderstood. I think a lot of people will come on old him. Uh, a lot of people are going to come on Icelander to try and fight that. But that's kind of my main prediction. Uh, the Blitz changes I'm not really going to get into. Um, I play Blitz a bit, but I don't really play Blitz all that much anymore. Um, I think getting rid of Pouncing Links is definitely a great choice. That deck, that card just brought way too much damage way too quickly. Um, and often brought it on the one turn where your opponent already had to block everything. Um, so you're getting in five damage for free, which in Blitz is enough. Um, you know, Skeleta's gone. Um, I thought this um, was going to happen. Anything that enables like huge cost reduction is just very unfair. Um, and Skeleta really does that because of how rune chance can be banked. So um, it's just a bit unfair, really. Um, Storm Striders is like... I get why, right? I get why. Um, they they say this is based on internal testing, so I kind of have to believe with that. Um, but, you know, it does kind of feel like Wizard has kind of just been a bit neutered. Because um, one of the, the saving graces of Wizard was when you could finally win with Storm Striders and set things up. And it feels like without that, um, you're kind of a bit behind. You're kind of a bit in pain. Um, then we have... UPF, Yorick is banned. That's not surprising at all. Um, you know, he is not designed for anything other than kitchen table play. Um, you know, yeah. No. No. Uh, you know, the idea basically if you if you show up with Yorick and there's anyone at that table that doesn't know beforehand that when they show up that you're going to be playing Yorick and then doesn't want to shuffle their deck in yorick is a problem right so if you're playing with four friends and they all know you're bringing yorick and you bring yorick and that's just it you know um then that's fine you're playing yorick uh but if you show up at like a competitive upf event where people don't know you're playing yorick and then you have to shuffle all your cards together that is going to really piss some people off especially if two people have the same color sleeves and everything like people have to prepare for yorick at the table um they can't just show up with whatever and hope that they have, don't have the same color sleeves as someone else that you know, their cards don't get lost, right? So that just makes sense. Um, this one is also interesting, um, one I actually completely agree with. Um, we had a thing where Young Prism was able to show up to a tournament despite the fact that Old Prism had got Living Legend and then did well enough to maybe be in chance of getting some Living Legend points, uh, which is a bit crazy. Um, or no, actually did get Living Legend points from a classic constructed event, um, which then were applied to her as a Blitz deck. Um I think this is fine. Look, you're designing crazy young heroes for Blitz, and please design more crazy young heroes for Blitz, right? We want we want mad young heroes in Blitz. We want more Valders and Cassis and Benjis, and we want just tons more fun young heroes in Blitz because Blitz is the introductory format. It's not the competitive format, Bar Worlds. It's designed to be accessible, interesting, fun, place to do crazy stuff, right? Make more young heroes for Blitz. This change means they can do that confidently without one of those heroes accidentally being broken and then spilling over into Classic Constructed as well and ruining both formats at the same time, right? And also, when a hero gets Living Legend, like, from a format, the hero should go away. I'm sorry, you shouldn't just be able to rock up with that young hero and play it in the tournament and just take a 20 health penalty because that means if that deck was truly broken enough... Like, for example, if Starvro, um, if he was a young hero and you could just rock up with Starvro, imagine how everyone feels. It feels pretty terrible. So, um, you know, I think this is a good change. So there we go. Summary of today's episode. It's Armory Weekend. Could have been better. Need to figure out what we're doing with pre-releases for supplemental sets, guys. You need to have an answer for that. They need to be better than this. Uh, better than a Super Armory where people are forced to preload on cards and you know just there's no structure or format you know that actually gets you packs of the new cards and there's no prizes and things like that no you can do better you can do better for supplemental sets i know you can um you know maybe the community will come up with a format for you that works better and you know you can just tell people that um worlds looks fantastic wish i was going just can't justify it without being qualified and with the stuff that's going on with work and things like that uh, and then the banner restricted changes look good 
I'm surprised by no changes to Briar, but you know, I think dealing with something small from old Tim's kit just to rein him in a little bit is probably a good decision. Um, though I think, I think I think the answers were out there, but we haven't found them yet, so we'll see what happens, right? Um, there we go. That's pretty good. Um, in terms of just wrapping up, in terms of flesh and blood for me, like over the next few months, I'm definitely going to be having a chill two months. I will be obviously opening Dynasty. I've got my Dynasty preview. I'm still going to aim for one episode every two weeks or so, just not as regularly because I won't be playing as much. I will be doing a tier list before Worlds based on what I'm seeing, um, just the community talking about, not any testing groups because I'm not part of any Worlds testing groups. I will probably be playing in my armories. I'll probably be chilling out and, you know, just having a bit of fun playing casual flesh and blood and just enjoying um you know being off the competitive grind for a while i mean a lot of people not just myself have said you know the tournament schedule this year has been really aggressive not having more advanced notice meant that you were kind of chaining events together and do you know what it's genuinely nice to have a bit of a break i've been playing you know world of warcraft classic again i've been playing a bit more league i've been taking time to experiment with some other card games like genesis um and you know I've been playing a few more board games. I've been breaking out my commander decks. I'm doing videos on my commander decks. I put a little crown on Belittle Dude. You can see that in my shorts because uh, it's Dynasty. So he gets his crown. Um, Belittle is the king of, of the format. Um, yeah, that's it really. Life's been pretty good. I've been playing my Switch. Um, so yeah, you'll still get Flesh and Blood content from me, obviously. Um, every week, every two weeks. I'll be doing tier lists before Worlds. I'll be doing some hype for my Dynasty spoiler once I know what it is. Um, and I figure out how I'm going to celebrate it. And obviously I'll be talking about news and stuff like that that's going on. But competitively, like you won't see me posting like event videos or event summaries and stuff like that. Because I just haven't got any to go to um, until January. And when January comes around, I'm going to Leeds for a weekend. We're going to get great Indian food. We're going to go to a Battle Hardened, go to a PTQ. Hopefully by then we know what Pro Tour that's for. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not going to play in it, but... I may also not play in it in protest if I don't know what Pro Tour is for, right? PTQ should have, you should know where the Pro Tour is and you should know what it's on. We've had that discussion before. We're not going into that again, but I've said this before, like I'm, I shouldn't have to go to a qualifying event like an RTN or a ProQuest and not know where the event I'm qualifying is and when it's on, right? Because how hard am I practicing for that season? How much money am I spending going to these qualifying events? And then it turns out it's on like, the weekend of my best friend's wedding and i can't go and i've spent all this money going to try and get qualified and i can't attend right you just need to you need to tell people how, when and where so we'll see come january i'm sure we'll know when that pro tour is on and where it is but also like if it's in asia i'm not going to asia to play a pro tour right i'm going on asia to go on holiday if i go to asia it'll be to go to a beach in thailand and eat good food and swim you know so We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, right. That is me. This is Steel First Speaks. As always, if you liked this video, please do subscribe. About 50% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to them. I would obviously love to get that number up because obviously that is subscribers and that is how you are judged as a channel. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Also, let me know if you liked the interviews I did uh, two weeks ago. Um, I definitely have it on my radar to do at least one interview a month. If you are listening to this and you would like to be interviewed by me because you have done something fun, you can get in touch. I will talk to you. Um, I'm a pretty fun guy too. I'm a fun guy. Uh, but that doesn't leave much room for... <laughs> that doesn't leave much room for the rest of the episode. So I will talk to you guys all very, very soon.